Hello and welcome. This is Spoonie with the first in a series of tutorials on how to use Starbase's ship builder. I've been seeing people mention that the ship builder looks daunting, and it definitely does at first, but once you get the hang of how it all comes together and how everything works, it's pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, so first we'll go over the UI, and then jump straight into how to build a frame, and in the following tutorials uh, we'll go into wiring, engines, basic YOLOL, and everything you need to create a ship that can actually fly. Alright, so first I'd like to go over a little bit about the uh, user interface or the UI. Uh, if you look at the top of your screen, you're going to see several buttons that will open various windows. Uh, the five you're going to want to have open just to get started is your asset browser, which gives you all of the items that you can actually place into the editor. Uh, the toolbox, which gives you a variety of ways to interact with those objects. Uh, tool options which gives you some basic information about the positioning of those objects. Uh, the undo system, which is really your best friend in the editor. You're going to get really comfortable with Control-Z, Control-Y, uh, which if you don't know, Control-Z is undo, Control-Y is redo. Uh, and then properties, which will come into play once we're placing things like engines or YOLL chips or generators, that kind of thing. Um, there's also the budget. Uh, the building budget tool which shows you what the ship is actually going to cost when you're finished. There's the uh, test mode which is hotkey F5 which will come into play much later when we actually have something that we want to test. And then the auto snap tool which pay attention to this because it's very easy to accidentally turn this off using shift C. Uh, since you're going to be holding shift a lot as you hold shift the camera will move a little bit faster uh, than when you're not and if you'd like the camera to move faster or slower, just without holding shift, you can always go to camera, move speed. I forget what the default is, but I've set mine down to four. I prefer it uh, to move a little slower to fine tune some of these smaller ships. Uh, down here with your toolbox, you've got move, rotate, uh, select, which are going to be your three primary, and then bolt, weld, and durability, and then when we get into cables and pipes. But the top three, especially for this video, that you're going to be using are definitely move, rotate, and select. So next we're going to actually place items into the world. So select whatever size beam you'd like to start with. I always usually start with the largest. And you just left click to place it down. Now once you've got it placed it down, uh, you can see if you're on the select tool, you cannot just grab it and move it around. You have to actually be on the move tool, which you can click or it's hotkey one. If you press hotkey one multiple times, you can see I'm doing now, it will switch you between whatever it is you're pressing. If I press hotkey two, four, and the select tool. So it makes it really easy to jump back and forth. The select tool is also hotkey three. So if you want something to move, you have to select the move tool, grab the white box, and then you can move it. Uh, if you want it to just move tune it. You can grab the arrows. That doesn't work super well when there's nothing to attach it to though. So let's place a second beam. You can see that it snaps right into place. And we'll just go ahead and make a very simple box. And to rotate these beams all I'm doing is pressing X, Y, and Z. And that will rotate it on its respective axis. Make sure these are all lined up. And when you want to select multiple items, you can do this, hold shift, and it'll select multiple, or hold control, it will deselect whatever you're clicking. And then, same as in any copy and paste, you can control C to copy it, control X to cut it out. And then where you just press, uh, press control V in order to copy it. So let's fill out this box here. And the more you have uh, placed it down, the easier it is and the quicker it is to, to fill this ship out. That 
needs to be moved a little bit. And to reselect things once I've deselected them, I'm just pressing Control Z. It will literally undo anything that you've done. So if I'm clicking something, oh, I don't want to click that, Control Z, it will unselect it, deselect it. So now that we've got this basic frame, you're going to open up your weld tool, which is something, the first mistake I made when I first started playing around with the ship editor, I, I thought you bolted everything together, so I was literally trying to go around and bolt these beams together, which was a real pain. But it is not how you connect these beams. Uh, you just go to the weld tool, and you can weld them individually, you can weld the selected, or you can just click apply to all, which is what I usually do and it will weld all beams that are connected to one another. So once they're welded together, you can check its durability, and you see that it says no ship frame. It will say no ship frame until you've placed an engine on the frame, and then it will give you a ship warp followed by a number. You want it to be over one. If it is under one, 0 0.8 or whatever, it means that there's a durability issue. Uh, but the ship will show you these items. Like if there was a durability with this beam, it would show up as red. The box would also show up as red. So if it's inside something else, it's very easy to locate. All right. So now that you've got the hang of placing beams, welding them together, uh, we're gonna start connecting things to them that we can actually use. Uh, in this case, we'll do a cargo ship and we will connect say 10 cargo containers and just build them all into place. And you can see once you get the hang of copying pasting things it actually goes pretty quickly. You will have to play around with the lengths of these beams a little bit though but once they're welded together they act as one so you don't have to worry about oh I used too many small ones and there's gonna be durability issues uh, nothing like that. So that looks like it's the right length. So we will then copy this, place it on top as well. All right. And now we'll start connecting the beams. One on each side. And you know what? Let's make this actually twice the size. Let's make this 20 crates. So let's start with these supports here. And you're going to want as many connection points as you can get because when these crates get full, they get heavy. It might cause durability issues, but if that happens, just get out of your ship fly over to the one that's showing it has a durability issue, put a few extra bolts in, usually that solves it. And there we go. And then we can just copy, paint. oops just copy and paste these. And we can do the same for both sides here. You can see this gets real quick once you've got the whole frame together. You can easily copy and paste entire segments of your ship together. See, so once we've got this built, we can literally just double the size of it uh, by copying and pasting. And there you go, 20 cargo crates. Now, once these are here, we're gonna weld the beams together. Click the weld tool, apply to all, there you go. And since the uh, cargo containers will not weld to the, the beams, we're going to select everything. And you can weld, you can, you know, uh, do this by hand where you go in and bolt them into place, but that's extremely tedious. 
So there's a handy tool called Auto Bolt, and it will bolt anything that can be bolted uh, to what's selected. And there you go. These are now all bolted together and bolted onto the frame. As you can see, we're still showing yellow durability and no ship frame, and that will continue to happen until we put an engine somewhere on this ship, which we will do next. <laughs>